the amount of things that I've seen around me that were very limited. And my goal was to become the best bartender in London. That was my goal at the time. You have experienced the jail experience as well. If I wouldn't have uh, had the pains I had in the past, I wouldn't become the man I am today. How did this change your life? That night I, I felt this is not the life I want to do. But I'm a living example together with another thou hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people who started from zero and they made something happen. So this should make people realize that it's possible. I was just a young guy believing that my dreams can be possible. What would you say to Pasquale the kid or Pasquale the teenager? I would tell him that there are better ways to make money. Today Blue Magic Group is valued at 80 million euros, yes? We are talking about 25% of the male population out there. So that means that one man every four suffer from hair loss. That's a very big number. We are helping thousands of people. Today, more than 22,000 patients will change life. And I also uh, teach and train my employees to leave my company within five years. Do you know any Albanian words, by the way? This is when the podcast is going to go wrong. Zemmer, I know Tedua, I know Miropashim, Notanemir, Sikalova Mir, Chabonemir, I know Diali, <laughs> Ovla. What has poverty taught you? That I don't want to be poor. How uh, do you manage stress? I ask myself, if these things upset me right now, will they still upset me after one year? If the answer is no, then I say to myself, why should I be upset right now? and I don't get upset anymore. Are you in love? I am in love, yeah. She's Albanian. I feel lucky with the girl I found. I'm very happy to have in my studio, in Inspire today, the angel investor, il fondatore and CEO di Blue Magic Group International, Pasquale Mignasi. You are a Napoletano from Naples, mm -hmm. living in Albania, talking to the Albanian audience, to an international audience, but in English. It's my first time in a podcast in Albania, so I'm sure it's going to be nice. What is the secret to find the best pizza in Naples? <laughs> or you just have to follow the scent? My first advice for people looking for the best pizza in Napoli, first of all, is not to write in English on Google, best pizza in Napoli. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll be directly only to tourist people. Uh -huh. okay? So you have to write in Italian. La, la best pizza in Napoli is la migliore pizza in Napoli. Is it true that uh, Napolitan people, they have coffee running into their veins instead of blood? They do, yeah, we do. Yes. 100%. A little bit more like Albania as well, no? But enjoying a pizza and the coffee in Naples, it's an experience of life. It's a love story, so better going there. I know you've been to Naples recently, right? I've been to Naples and I loved it. It was uh, one of the best uh, trips of my life. Do you think the city would survive without the sound of uh, scooters zipping through the streets? No. 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 <laughs> I would say that Na Naples, Naples is great and people in Naples are great and we are famous all around the world just also because of the chaos mm -hmm. that there is in Naples. You have been raised in Naples? No, my family is from Napoli. Uh -huh. My mom and my dad are both from Napoli, but I was uh, raised in a small city in North Italy mm -hmm. with 16,000 inhabitants called Gedi in the uh, province of Brescia. So, Pasquale, you were born in Napoli, raised in Brescia, immigrated to the UK at the age of 22 for a better life. You've always thought and acted like a global entrepreneur with your life spent between Italy, UK, Turkey, Dubai, and recently Albania. I was wondering to know how have these countries shaped you as a businessman and as a person? The amount of things that I've seen around me that were very limited, right? So I wasn't aware of what was out there, what was achievable and what were people doing out there. No? My, my life was just on regards to what I used to see around my city. It was a small city, right? Uh, the most successful person in that city was a person with a supermarket, or with a bar. That's what I've seen successful people. That's, this is for me was what successful person is, right? So I moved to London in 2015. Uh, I was 22 years old in April. And my goal was to become the best bartender in London. That was my goal at the time. Right? And you made it, yes? No, no, I didn't mean it because uh, during the first two years when I was a bartender, then my plans have changed, my vision and my goals have changed, but I was a great bartender, I can say. Your first salary was? Uh, 1,100 uh, British pound. And it was not enough to fulfill your expectations for a good life? 
It was not enough to fulfill nothing, actually, because uh, only my room uh, rent was about 750 pounds a month. Then we had transportation and 150, 200 pounds a month. So I was left for, with more or less nothing. How did you survive? Taking uh, the right decisions and uh, believing that sooner or later I would have changed things. And when mm -hmm. I moved to London, I slept in a hostel, okay, because mm -hmm. my budget was very limited. There were 11 people in one room. And it was a bit of a challenge, yes. I stayed there for two weeks and I've seen rats in the, in the bathroom. It was a shared bathroom uh, in the third floor. So basically all the rooms in the shared bathroom on the third floor, everyone was showering there. Is there a moment in your life, in these hard times in London, that you realize that you have to change for sure the life and take another direction? There was a case, and I'm sure that a lot of people who are going to listen uh, to our chat today, they might see themselves in the same situation. When I was working as a bartender in uh, London, I did a New Year's event. The restaurant was open and we worked until 4 a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm. We were told by the manager that around 12 o'clock we were just been out and have partied all together as colleagues, but that didn't happen because the clients were still inside the restaurant. So we worked until 4, 4 a.m. And I remember that uh, that night I, I felt this is not the life I want to do. I don't want to be here Uh, serving people on the New Year's event, I want to be a client. I want to be there. I want to be able to afford a restaurant like this. It was Gaucho restaurant. It was a very expensive restaurant in, uh, in London. I want to be there from the other, you know, in the other side of the, of the counter and being a client and enjoying life. And that day I remember that I, I decided to give notice to, to the restaurant and in one week I was out and I moved into a new job, which was a state agent. And you were a superstar state agent, yes? I became, uh, after six months, I became the best negotiator in, uh, in the entire company. There were about 1,500 negotiators. I worked as a state agent for about two years. One of the best experiences, I would say, in, uh, in my life as an employee. How did this change your life, this experience? In that moment? I wanted to become a salesperson. I understood in life that in order to achieve greatness, you need to be able to sell yourself. You need to be able to understand marketing. You need to be very curious um, to see around you how people are making money. You need to be very attentive. Right? Sometimes uh, I walk around the street and I see a business on the street and I ask myself, why this business is making money and the one next to it is not making money, right? And uh, with that curiosity of a kid uh, is what has led me into be very curious uh, and to learn new skills and self-develop myself and understand that that was the only way to achieve greatness. Which is the highest uh, property price That I you sold. Have, you have sold, yeah. That was about six million pounds. It was a flat in, uh, in the central London. I was doing both rental and selling. Mm -hmm. I rented houses for 25,000 pound rent per month as well. It was a great experience. Yeah. Uh, um, that helped me to realize that people, there are really, really wealthy people out there, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine my, I just came from a salary of 1,100 pound and I was renting houses of 25,000 pound rent per month. So I was thinking, how can even people afford it, right? There must be a way. Right? And that made me very curious to find those ways. What does represent Albania to you? One of the points in which make uh, Albania great for foreigner investors is there is a lot of Albanians out there who are not able to see opportunities, you know, who maybe invest too much time into complaining how life is not great for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are not in a position to identify opportunities. So, um, uh, and there are also a lot of Albanians out there who can identify good opportunities and can grow. As you said before, it's a very virgin market. It's a market that, uh, where a lot of businesses uh, that maybe are existing in the UK and Europe here are not existing yet. Okay, and they can grow and they can be successful. It's actually the first time in my life since I live in London where I don't miss London. I still have a house in London. I go, to, I go there time by time, but I don't miss it. Uh, I love life here. Uh, I want Albania to be my base. How does Blue Magic Group success story begin? Great. All right. So I believe that people uh, are expecting the what's the secret sauce into become becoming successful, right? What I can tell you is that it's a process. 
is a process that you have to build up in your mind first. I was able at the time to visualize that the life that I wanted sooner or later would have happened. So everything was written in my mind. I was spending a lot of hours during the day, even during working as a bartender, as a state agent, who I wanted to become. Yeah, I was visualizing myself with a driver um, in, in the back seat um, with a nice car and uh, me going into meetings, me traveling international, me doing good for people, yeah, helping people, support people, motivating people, inspiring people, and all of this was already in my mind. So the first secret sauce, if you want to call it that way, is that it has to be in your mind. You have to believe that whatever is in your mind can be possible. Can, you can materialize that, right? What I can tell you is that there is not a, really a beginning on how I became um, an entrepreneur. So how I went from being an employee to become an entrepreneur. You have to take a lot of risk. You need to choose, first of all, that that's the life that you want. Right? Because not everybody wants to be an entrepreneur, right? There's a lot of risks involved, right? It can go well or less well if you don't take the right decision. I had a few hundred pounds in my account in which I bought a laptop, a desk, and a chair on Amazon. That was pretty much all I had on the side. And I started to, to create business, the first business, Blue Magic Group International, from my room. It was a room in a share house at the time, so it was a very small room. My desk couldn't even fit. I remember that sometimes I was working until late on the desk, and I was just in the night. I wasn't even having dinner sometimes. I was flipping on the bed from the desk and going to sleep. I still dress up, right? That small was the room. But what I can tell you is that uh, everything is possible. I'm a living example together with another hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people who started from zero and they made something happen. So this should make people realize that it's possible, right? I wasn't more lucky than uh, somebody who is listening to this podcast. I wasn't more rich than somebody else. And I wasn't more prepared or I didn't even study more than somebody else. I was just a young guy believing that my dreams can be possible. But you haven't studied for business. I'm blessed for having built a strong mindset inside me. Sometimes people, they close their eyes and uh, they don't realize that they, they have a lot of opportunities around them. So um, I'll tell you two words, mm -hmm. discipline and resilience. Resilience, uh, why? Because is uh, the capability on not giving up. Yeah, sometimes you feel uh, not wanting to do something or something that you start doesn't go in the right direction. You have to be disciplined uh, in the morning when, uh, when you want to go on training, even if you don't feel like. Yeah, you go training because you are uh, disciplined, not because you want to go training. You have to be disciplined when you decide to eat healthy and not junk food, uh, which we are surrounded from. I read somewhere something very interesting about discipline, why, why people are frightened from the world, discipline. They think that you put <laughs> their lives in a frame when you say to them, you have to follow a discipline because nothing great in this world was never achieved without following your routine. But the routine can be something beautiful as well, yes? Look, the way I see discipline is not to do the same things over and over again, right? Which you don't enjoy. I think that discipline is, it comes in both ways. You have to be able to do things that not necessarily you enjoy, on a daily basis, like I said before, going to train, read books, self-develop yourself. You might not enjoy that during the process, but you will enjoy it later once you see your body in a better shape, once you see your set of skills and then now they reach new level. This is something that you're gonna realize only after, right? Do you have a ritual? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah, a discipline you follow every day? Yeah, yeah, of course. Like things that you don't like to do, but you have to do? And things that you like to do and you do. I go to gym uh, I, uh, mm -hmm. on, on a daily basis. Uh, When do you I wake train. up? Are you a morning person? I am a morning person. Uh, if by morning person you mean about 7.30, 8 o'clock. I'm mm -hmm. not uh, one of those gurus who say that you have to wake up around 3.45 or 4.00 a.m. and go on a high buff or go to train in the night or whatever. I'm not that kind of morning person, right? You But take the coffee in the morning? 
I, I learn to take the coffee after 90 minutes you wake up. If you take the coffee in uh, the moment you wake up, you will feel sleepy after lunch. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, This is what it was for me and for many people out there. So if you take the coffee after 90 minutes, once you get your body to fully wake up, mm-hmm. you will feel a, a different type of boost of energy. So you feel the boost of energy throughout the whole day. Then you go to the office? Hmm. My routine, you want to know a little bit more yes. about my routine. My goal after, after having a good breakfast, only done by eggs, is to understand how the day is going to go and what are the decisions I need to take to bring forward businesses and to bring forward my people. On a daily basis, how many eggs you eat? Eight to ten eggs a day. You get a very good amount of protein from the eggs, huh? A lot. You know, It's good for the muscles or not only? You know what, Arketa? I was, uh, I was listening to, to a, pod- a podcast a few days ago. Uh-huh. There was this guy in, uh, in the 80s and he was talking about cholesterol. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Um, and he was saying that how in the, in, the, in the past, a right level of cholesterol was around 240. Today, days, the right level of cholesterol, that's what they are trying to teach us, is around 120. And they say that cholesterol is wrong. Right? And this doctor uh, said in this podcast that what they realized that people who are dying from tumors or cancers, they all have something in common. They have a low level of cholesterol, around 120, which is what they are recommending people to have today days. So I believe that the right level of cholesterol should be around 240. Okay? Uh, I challenge people out there who might tell me I'm wrong and I would like to know the facts. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why I eat, I eat a lot of eggs on a daily basis. I want my level of cholesterol to be high. Why did you name Blue Magic Group your company? Today, Blue Magic Group is valued at 80 million euros, yes? Yes. Net worth. Yes. This is a question I have not answered to nobody yet. I believe there is less than five people out there who knows why I have named Blue Magic Group, Blue Magic Group. At the time, when I decided that that was not the life I wanted to have, I was uh, 16, 17 years old, I decided that uh, I wanted to become an entrepreneur. And in that period, I watched a movie. Uh, it's called American Gangster of Denzel Washington. That's one of my favorite movies. That movie talks about a real story on uh, how Denzel Washington in the, in the movie, which I don't recall what was his the real name, uh, became a, a, a very famous person in uh, not really legal ways, right? And there was something in that movie that was called Blue Magic. You have experienced the jail experience as well for a short period of your life, paying the bill for your mistakes. Let's say that uh, life, I reserve some pains uh, in my life um, and, uh, and I hope that it will continue to give me pains. Why I believe that is because pains are, are what make a man alive. Yeah? If I wouldn't have uh, had the pains I had in the past, I wouldn't become the man I am today. If I wouldn't have currently certain pains, I wouldn't develop or grow certain things, right? If uh, a few years ago I wouldn't see, I wouldn't have looked myself in the mirror, not be happy about my body shape and have a painful conversation within myself in the mirror, I wouldn't become a person that likes to train and wanting to, to, to develop my body shape, right? How do you cope with pain? There are a lot of people suffering out there that are listening to this uh, conversation, so maybe we can give them a hand, we can help them. I believe it's all about self-development. I would uh, suggest people out there who are experiencing pain to self-develop themselves, to learn new skills, because new skills will give you access to a better life and a different view to see life. When, when uh, I didn't have money in my pocket, it was painful. It was painful when I wanted to, to take my girlfriend for a date or I wanted to take my family for a holiday and I couldn't do it because I didn't have money in the bank. It was painful when I wanted to buy myself uh, some new clothes and I couldn't do it, right? All of that was painful. I learned that I was using my brain in the wrong direction and I was using my brain to develop the wrong things. And definitely, uh, I am grateful for that experience. First of all, because I, I lived the street life, and that has helped me to develop a strong character today in business, okay? I don't allow nobody to put 
feet on top of my head and I don't allow people to disrespect me. And the second point I can tell you is that he's, uh, he has helped me, as you said, that freedom is the, the most precious thing that we can have in life and we don't want to ruin it for making uh, wrong choices and not making the right decisions. Sometimes we live in a bubble, Alketa, no? and we, we develop and we grow based on what we see around us. Yeah? At the time, I didn't even know what was London. I didn't even know what was Dubai. I didn't even know that it was possible to buy a Ferrari or to live in a $1 million mansion, right? Or more. All of those things for me were not in my life. No, I was close in a small bubble, in a small city, and all I could see around me was or to uh, become slave of this matrix or to try to escape that into uh, what was the only um, available way at the time for me, or maybe not, but that was what I could see at the time, yeah, into taking uh, less legal action. The majority of your clients are men. Can you please explain us in a few words, how does the hair transplant industry work? Great. And how the process is done. You have done your own hair as well? Yes, yes. Let me help my brain now to switch in from, uh, from, from jail uh, situation into <laughs> Blue Magic Group Intonation. Look, oh, thank you. I'm very grateful for the message you have shared. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm very happy to By share it. By the way, with, uh, thank you so much. And, uh, and I hope people won't, won't judge me for that. And I hope that uh, it will help inspiring other youngers out there to take the right decisions which uh, I think is needed sometimes. Blue Magic Group, look, look, what, what I can tell you is that we don't do only hair transplantation for male. We have uh, a lot of females patients each month that choose us to uh, they choose Blue Magic Group to have hair transplantation. The way hair transplantation is very simple, how it works. We extract graft, so your hair from the donor area, what is called the donor area, so uh, from the back of your head, and we implant them, we implant the graft on the baldness area, right? So those are your hair, everything is natural. Okay? No pain? Um, no pain. Local anesthesia? Relative. Look, we, we do a local anesthesia. This uh, help uh, people to, to have a hair transplantation, to have a surgery completely painless. There might be a little bit of discomfort when the surgeons, they apply the anesthesia part, okay? But that only lasts for five to 10 minutes. But once the anesthesia is all around your head, there's nothing that you feel anymore. Um, if you watch some videos online during the, the hair transplantation procedure, we have patients working on the phone, patients having video conference from people from uh, another part of the world. Or Some of your patients have to watch your podcast, so we say hi to them. <laughs> okay? yeah. You have to put this podcast while they are doing the procedure. To watch the podcast of while they're having the air transplantation? Yes. Why not? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to do that. Very interesting life story. If you were to write the story of your life in a book, I'm curious to know, what would the title be? Hmm. You know... The way I see life and one of the strongest things I experience in my life is that you are always better of what people want you to believe you are. We live in a society where people are trying to stop you from taking risk. People try to stop you from becoming a better person because that's how they see society. I like to look at life like an iceberg. Okay, an iceberg is not only what you see above the surface, it's also what you see below the surface, which is way bigger than what you see in the surface. So if I would write a book, probably my first book, I would, I would call it Below the Iceberg. Why? Because I want to inspire people to not to see things how they are in the surface, but to go a little bit deeper and to realize how are below the surface. You have changed the lives of 22,000 patients. How does that feel? Feels awesome because a lot of patients, and I'm talking about thousands of thousands of those patients, they have seen their life change completely. Um, hair loss is all about confidence. Yeah. Uh, once you experience hair loss, and we are talking about 25% of the male population out there, so that means that one man every four suffer from hair loss. That's a very big number. Mm -hmm. 
and there is many reasons why a man can suffer from hair loss. What I can tell you is that a hair loss is all about confidence, right? Once a patient um, undertakes a hair transplantation, they become more confident. And we've seen thousands of patients that they've seen their life change completely. Once you're more confident, they go back to gym, they start eating healthier food, they start looking to for new partners sometimes, they change partners, so they just look for, for a partner, they want to get married, they want to create a family, they want to create businesses. So you see thousands of these men that they've seen their life changing for the better. And that's the best satisfaction we have as a Blue Magic Group International because we are helping thousands of people. Today, more than 22,000 patients. We changed life. 80% are from America. So imagine patients traveling 14 hours to reach our facility in Istanbul. And um, you, you can tell that even you know, the results, they come after 6 to 12 months. But you can tell even on the day of the surgery, their smile, their emotion on how they start to see life change completely. Their confidence is already there. And this is what makes her happy. I read something that you have said. It's important to buy a car at the right moment, but buy a cheaper car than what you can actually afford. If you believe that you have the right mindset to make those money back, then buy a car, you're going to make those money back. If buying a nice car will make you feel great every time you wake up and you enter the car before you go to the office or go on meetings, makes you feel great, do it, right? My philosophy was uh, buying the car in the right moment. It was... Uh, uh, it, it might sound contradictory, but uh, the way I, I, I wanted to train myself was not to, not to spend money into buying a car when I could. It was more making money. Now I can buy a nice car. I don't do it. Why? Because that's not the most important thing in life. Do you spend money to look rich or to live? rich in love and in happiness uh, definitely I don't like to look rich only yeah, because uh, that, that wouldn't make any sense um, um, and uh, even looking rich is not that bad right? but in a post on Instagram you said I bought this car purely for the network I want to meet other business owners to make more money it wasn't even about the car for me that was just a bonus if you can elaborate on that you know, when, uh, when you arrive with a, with a very expensive car into meetings and when people see you arrive in those meetings with a, with a nice car, you don't have to present yourself too much. Mm -hmm. In the same way you enter a meeting room and you, have, you are in, uh, in a very good physique. Yeah? What's behind that? People start to respecting you from the first moment. Why? Because having a good physique means discipline, means that this person has trained for months and years, and people already respect you for that. If you have a nice car, people already understand that you have achieved something in life, that mm -hmm. you might have struggled for, for, that, uh, for that car, and uh, not necessarily, uh, as you probably f you are thinking at the moment, that you might have done the wrong things into achieving that car, right? No, there are a lot of ladies and women who need to have the Birkin bag from Hermes to look rich and powerful and strong. But there are a lot of other women who go understated in a very smart and elegant way in <coughs> meetings. And they use all their intellectual and power in another way. So I don't think there is a formula. Yeah, in one side you have, uh, you have the people you just mentioned. In the other side you might have uh, Mark Zuckerberg or uh, whatever those big guys that they go around always with the same t-shirt, right? Not branded. But the way I see life is that I think they're both boring. I like to dress up nicely. Right, but not because I want to show off. Sometimes you you dress up nice, you have a nice car, a nice uh, outfit, or whatever. People understand that you might be somebody, right? So they respect you before you even talk. You mentioned that buying a house is not for you. Why? I mean, specifically, is investing in real estate, according to you, a wise choice? I think real estate is the best business uh, of all times and it's always going to be. What I mean by that is that when you uh, create a debt, you have to make sure that your, the debt is not paid by you, but it's paid by someone else. What do I mean by that? That when you buy a house or you put it for rent 
or you create if you buy a house for yourself and you create debt so you you take a mortgage so the banks give you money you want to create another passive income that pays mm-hmm. for that house that's the right way of looking at that when you create a debt you want to make sure that the debt is paid by something else another source another passive income or by another person How did you go from your uh, last experience as an employee into starting your business and become an entrepreneur? You need to take the choice in your mind that that's the life that you want to do. Now you need to understand that there are risks, a lot of risk associated into it. There is a lot of struggle, there is a lot of being uncomfortable. So I decided that uh, I had to 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 leave my job as an estate agent, take all the money I had on the side into creating a new business and taking all the risk. I was in London and I was 25 years old at the time. Uh, you cannot become an entrepreneur if you don't want to be an entrepreneur, right? You cannot become an entrepreneur if you don't know what it takes to become an entrepreneur. So you, it's, it's first of all it's all about who you want to be. No, because there are a lot of employees who working as employees under a very successful umbrella of a good leader, they grow up, but in their comfort zone and they make a choice, but they are excellent people because without them, we cannot make success. So they are our guarantee, our best uh, asset in the companies. I do agree with that. And I also uh, teach and train my employees to leave my company within five years. I don't want to have people working for me for more than five years. Why? I want to train because I'm a believer that can, you can have a better life not being an employee. Yeah. And I, I do understand I have a lot of businesses and I have a lot of employees, right? But I teach and I train my people to understand that you can achieve a greater life not being an employee. And by telling them this, I show them that I can help you to find a way if you want to achieve something in life. But as I said before, that's not for everybody. You need to want to become an entrepreneur, right? That's not the life for everybody. But if you want it, you can come and work for us and I can teach you the way on how to become an entrepreneur. Don't you think that even after five years, it's beautiful to see how you have helped people to grow up in your business and work for your business, but work for themselves as well, giving them shares on your business? Mm-hmm. Don't you think this is a nicer way to build yeah. uh, empires and grow together? And then, of course, you need some new blood on the company. And every year and every five years, you have to track some brand new hits there. Mm-hmm. And entrepreneurs like us, they do understand that if you grow people and if you be- help them to become leaders, sooner or later they might leave you, right? And that's great. My philosophy of growing with people is another one. Mm. I like to invest on them, but I don't like that after three years or five years, someone gets the advantage of what I have invested. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm prepared like you that if someone wants to leave for a better opportunity, good luck. Babe. I always tell them, I want, I want to put you in a position mm-hmm. where if you leave Blue Magic Group, is because you're going to open your own business. Mm-hmm. Yeah? It upset me to see people leaving uh, one of my companies and to go and work for another company. That makes me feel like I've not done my job right. Mm-hmm. My job right is when I've developed somebody into achieving their goals and that necess- not necessarily means that they have to work for me for the rest of their life, right? I-, I like to see them leaving my companies and create their own company and hiring new people, inspire new people that after that will inspire other people. But I do understand that no one is an entrepreneur and if life will be 100% of entrepreneur, there will be no employees, so there will be no company and there will be no even entrepreneur because you cannot be an entrepreneur without employees, right? But it's a, it's a, it's a way of looking at things. I like to, to develop teams of leaders who become leader and who understand that they can have a better life. What's the difference or the distinction between an entrepreneur and an investor? The Four Quadrants of the Cash Flow. By the way, there is a very interesting book of Robert Kiyosaki. Mm-hmm. Okay? He's the one who wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Okay? This book is called The Four Quadrants of the Cash Flow. What are the four quadrants? Very simple. The number one is when you are employee. So you work for somebody else. You work for a company in exchange of a salary. It can be the basic salary with commission or be the salary. The number two is when you are a self-employment. So you open a, a shop or you provide services. Like a freelancer, yeah. Yeah, like a freelancer. The number three is when you are an entrepreneur. 
be an entrepreneur means that you have uh, opened a company and your presence not necessarily is needed inside the company to generate cash flow. Be an investor is investing into businesses. So to make your money, make more money. Mm -hmm. So literally it's like um, um, somebody come to me and on a weekly basis I receive people coming to me in my office or trying to uh, promote their business ideas or startups and they're looking for an investor. And be, be an investor is, I invest, for example, 100,000 euro in exchange of 50% of your business or startups or ideas. And if this develops, those 100,000 become 10x, 20x, mm -hmm. or hopefully more. So be, be an investor is that, getting your money, generating more money for you. Can you share some of your words that you have learned in Albanian? <laughs> Do you know any Albanian words, by the way? This is when the podcast is going to go wrong. <laughs> now, look, I, I, I do. Um, people tell me, look, five years in Albania, you should have learned Albania a little bit more. I do agree with all of them. Uh, I could have been in a better position. Uh, I know Zemmer. I know Tedua. I know Miropashim, Notan Emir, Sikalov Emir, Chabon Emir. I know Diali, <laughs> Ovla. Um, like basic things. Let's say that my count is about 30 to 40 words that I know in Albania, which is very bad. Before going to Blue Magic Group recruitment topic, I would like to ask you if you have any mentor in life or business who has impacted you with his lessons, his way of being, his examples, his model of life and work. 100%. I do have a lot of mentors. I do recommend people out there to seek for mentors. Mm -hmm. yeah? Today days, I am a mentor for multiple people out there and I, st I, and I still have current mentors in uh, every discipline, uh, whatever is business, whatever is a uh, uh, gym or whatever is uh, just someone very wise who helps me to, to see things from different perspective. Yeah, that's what I believe is a mentor is sometimes. People that uh, help you to see things uh, from a different angle, right? You said that the best advice comes from people you don't know, yes? In our pre-interview. Is there a story you can share with us? Mm. Yeah, look, it's sometimes when you know somebody, uh, people that you know are predictable, mm -hmm. right? Uh, think about you talk with your best friend or you talk with your parents or brothers or sister or people that you know in life. You already know how they might see certain situation or what they might think or what they might suggest you, right? Mm -hmm. But people that you don't know, they are very unpredictable. Yeah? And sometimes the words they might share with you can impact your life more. Let's go to the Blue Magic Group recruitment strategy. How do you select people, uh, Pasquale? What is your recruitment process? Out of 850 applications, you select only 25 for your academy. So calculating this, only 1% of them gets the job. Yeah, that's right. We are very exclusive on uh, how we are hiring people of Blue Magic Group. Mm -hmm. And only 1% of the application that we receive gets the job. How uh, do you manage stress? How do you manage stress? Uh, I believe that uh, being able to manage stress is one of the most important skills that you must have if you want mm -hmm. to become an entrepreneur. If I measure now your cortisol levels, are they high? Are they balanced or are they low? They're always high. Always high. Yeah. What do you do to lower the cortisol level, the stress hormone? Do you go to the gym? Do you do some massage? Do you go for a walk? Look, I, I do like massages. I do massages on a weekly basis, one or two. And, uh, but everything is in your mind. So I ask myself, if these things upset me right now, will they still upset me after one year? If the answer is no, then I say to myself, why should I be upset right now? And I don't get upset anymore. But I have... A real serious mm. suggestion for all stressed people who are in business, hard workers and uh, cortisol levels high. You have to go to massage. Massage is very, very healthy okay. for physical and mental health, you know? It's a must. Okay. And uh, this is taught by a very important, well-known Indian doctor that I met years ago, like 15 years ago, who helped me to build like a lifestyle health routine. There is a song from Napoli and uh, the lyrics say, we are raised in the streets dreaming about how to make money. 
if you could go back in time to talk to your younger self, yeah. what would you say to Pasquale the kid or Pasquale the teenager? I would tell him that there are better ways to make money. I, I do believe money are very important. It's really money so important to be happy? I believe that money resolves 90% of the problems that people might have in life. Mm -hmm. To me, it reminds me that uh, the kid I was mm -hmm. and what I used to believe was the right thing to, to believe at the time and what I believe now as a grown-up man. I like the song, it has good lyrics. I don't uh, associate myself and my belief with what these guys are saying in the songs. But it reminds me what I, the way I used to concept life. How will you teach your future children about the value of money and financial responsibility? Okay. I, I will teach them not to be spoiled. I will teach them the value of money. I'm working on a daily basis into creating a, a wealthy generation. My goal is not to become financial freedom, which I already am, is to become a generational of families after mine, after my kids, that will be wealthy. And in order to maintain that, you need to teach your son and the son of your son the value of money. Do you think that kids who come from poor families become stronger? No, I don't believe that. I come from a poor family, but I believe that if I would have come from a rich family and my parents were able to discipline me and show me the value of money, it would have been the same way. What has poverty taught you? That I don't want to be poor. How has your intuition or gut feeling uh, influenced your decision making and choices you have done in your life? I see in the gut feeling into taking fast decision. Mm -hmm. Okay. I believe that in life today days we have to take fast decision. Sometimes you might take the right decision, sometimes you might take less right decisions. But once you take decision, then you can focus on making the decision right. Mm -hmm. But it's important to take fast decision Good. and to move forward fast. So gut feeling is making fast decision. That's how I see it. And, um, and of course, uh, then uh, the, the more decision you take, the better decision you can take at the same time. Do you cut off people in your life when they betray you and they disappoint you? Or you, you are a to, person of second chances? Mm -hmm. I, be, I believe the second chances must be given if the person, if you make an evaluation that that person really understood what kind of mistake mm -hmm. they've done, right? Uh, but in the same time, the more you grow in life, the more you, be, you need to be able to cut people from your life. I've been betrayed in life. I have, uh, when I opened my first business, I hired who was my first sales director in the state Asian company. He was managing 150 people. He was working for that company for 13 years. And when I decided to open my own business, I hired him under Blue Magic Group. And he came and with you in Albania, actually. And he came to me. He's actually, he came to, into Albania before myself. Uh -huh. uh, he, he has helped me to, to open the company. He has helped me to find the office, hiring the first five people. We were in a small office in Muslim Shiri. I don't know if it's how you say it. And uh, then after a month, he tried to betray me and he has asked 50% of the business, right? Which uh, was not what we have agreed. So I had to cut him off. Did you fail in some of your businesses? And if yes, how did you cope with failure? I'll be honest with you. I have not had until now any businesses that have failed, right? And... To be honest with you, I don't believe I, I will ever have any business that will fail mm -hmm. because I, I have that capability on find always the way to make things work. I have failed during processes. Mm -hmm. I have failed during uh, growing businesses. I have failed into a uh, working relationship and the process itself, right? But the end product has been successful and uh, I would like to die in the future after 100 years old saying that uh, I'm a man who has created businesses that never failed and will be alive, will still existing after I'm not in this planet anymore. What would you recommend to help people become more financially educated in our country, Pasquale? Financial education, uh, there is not something you can learn around. Mm -hmm. It's something that you can learn on yourself. No one will come to you and try to save you and teach you how to make money. You need to wake up and understand that you are the only responsible for fi your financial situation. Uh, and these unfortunately are not things that they teach you at school. Uh, you need to find your own way on, uh, on uh, 
on learning financial uh, strategies on how to get better. What about relationships? What about jealousy between a woman and a man? Does it disturb you? Is jealousy love? Uh, at the right level, yes. I think you've got to be a little bit jealous. You need to make, you, you need to make that person feel like is mine right meaning not i own that person but you are my person i'm yours so i believe that a bit of jealousy and possessiveness needs to be there i'm from napoli from south italy you are albanian and we are very sometimes possessive and jealous with our partners and i think that a good balance is is creating a healthy relationship but are you in love i am in love yes so you're taken i'm taken <laughs> she's albanian what do you love the most about our albanian girl that took your heart away? <laughs> uh, I, I, I believe that uh, Albanian traditions and culture is uh, still a little bit old school. There are a lot of women out there that they have that old school style in which makes men believe that they can create a family and they can create a future. And, uh, and, and I think that this is still preserved in Albania, yeah? rather than if you might go in other countries out do, um, outside of Albania, like America, Canada, or wherever, it might be a little bit hard today days to find a good girl you know, with who you can create a family. I feel lucky with the girl I found. Can you make me a short description of what happens with Pasquale or what happened when he felt that he was falling in love? Look, what I can say is uh, uh, falling in love is not um, suddenly, it's a process, right? Uh, and you have in mind a way on how you see your partner to be and how you want your partner to be and what kind of partner you want to be. I believe that, first of all, if you want to make somebody else happy, you need to be happy with yourself. So if I'm happy with the man I am, I can make somebody else happy. So that's very important before you undertake a relationship. Yeah? If you're not happy... Don't get into a relationship. Mm -hmm. Get happy first with yourself and be able and capable to be on your own, alone, right? It and wasn't a colpo di fulmine, no. Uh, it love was. At first sight. It was in a way, and then love is something that develops, right? Um, um, it, but if you develop that, if you give that situation a possibility to develop, is because is more or less a colpo di fulmine, right? Because um, you have seen that there is something more behind that. Do I, you think a man loves just once in his life? He has only one great love story or love changes faces and colors I think in different are, periods of there life? There are love stories and love stories. You, you have your first love maybe when you're a teenager, when you're a kid, when you don't have much experience and you fall in love with a girl and you have the love story that stays forever and that can be maybe your last love story because you might not encounter somebody who makes you feel in love again. Did you learn something from the mm. divorce of your parents? Um, Has your childhood been difficult even because of their choices to separate their ways? Look, I believe that... Uh, Or you just accepted it and... I, 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 I accepted it. They are in a beautiful relationship and I'm in a very good relationship with both my dad and my mom. Uh, it's unfortunate if sometimes a separation happens. Uh, but uh, I believe that sometimes relationship, whatever there is a friendship relationship or a man to women relationship, sometimes there are uh, a cycle. Mm -hmm. there, um, there are a cycle. Uh, as they start, they might finish. So you need to be, you need to take the best out of those cycle without ruining. Um, um, the experience that you had. I know a lot of people that they might be in they might have been in five, ten years, twenty years of a relationship and once they break up they hate that person. Yeah? And oh if I would go back I wouldn't spend more time with that person anymore. And I think that's not right. No? What aspects of parenting do you intend to do differently from your parents as you prepare to fatherhood? How do you plan to approach parenting differently from your parents? I don't know. You don't know? You don't no, have any idea? I would like to be here today and give you a nice answer on how to be the best dad alive. I don't know. I think that being a parent is the hardest job in life and I, I believe it's a, it's, a, it's a job that you learn while you become a dad. Um, no one... Uh, yep, you learn from your dad or you might learn on what you see out there. 
but it's a job that you develop one, once you are a dad. So I don't know. I, I, I only know that um, my responsibility will be to provide for my family, for my woman and for my kids and to be the best man that they can possibly have. What I can tell you is that I want to be the superior for my son. I don't want my son to, to look at another man as a superhero. They can admire another man, but I need to be the first superhero. How is Pasquale in a relationship? So are you supportive with your partner? Are you the leader? Uh, you both need to be leaders. I think that, uh, of course, uh, genders are different. Mm -hmm. Men are different from uh, women, mm -hmm. right? We have different roles in societies and we have different responsibilities. I like to see myself as a partner that can um, help you to become a better person and in the meantime being open to become a better man through, mm -hmm. through what you can do for me, so through, through our relationship, throughout our relationship. Do you wash plates and iron clothes and uh, do the laundry? <laughs> I do, I do, I, yeah, yes? I really do. You cook? Uh, I do cook and I do wash uh, plates uh, when it's needed and I do help uh, my woman at all when it's needed. But What uh, are some fun cultural differences you have with your girlfriend, with your Albanian girlfriend? You guys take very seriously uh, presenting your parents to your partner, right? Uh -huh. If you're not sure 100% that this is going to be a serious relationship, <laughs> your parents don't know about it, your dad doesn't know, your mom doesn't know, and your family doesn't either. I know, I know people being in a relationship for two, three years, and the parents, they don't even know that my daughter is in a relationship or my son is in a relationship. It's not valid for everyone, no. Albanians do take a, a relationship very seriously right, at the same time. Long time ago, but... I, I think this mentality has been broken now. It's going, it's going away. It's fading Things away. Things have changed. It's for the better? For, for the, the better, of yeah. course. I love Albanians. What can I say? Is there any universal law that you would like to write if you had had the potential to do it? Do something good for somebody else each day. This is my philosophy. I try not to end any day of my life without having done something great for somebody. And I would like that person that will receive that something great from me to do something great from another person to another person. Thank you so much, Pasquale, for your time, your energy and your inspiration. Kështu që të them faleminderit shumë. Shumë faleminderit and <laughs> Alketa and Miru Pashim. Miru Pashim, yes. Miru Pashim, we will see each other again very soon, I guess. Great. I hope so, okay? We will. The very best of luck to you and uh, see you soon. Thank you. Gazuar. Gazuar. <laughs>